Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the CCA California podcast. I am Chris. She is Tony. Tony, how are you? I'm good. We have another podcast here. We're going to do another recap. No guests today. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. You have to stick with us. Not even Darren. Not even Darren. That, that slacker. Yeah, slacker. <laughs> well, we figured we'd come back on because, A, we haven't been on in a while. In case you haven't noticed, we've just have been very busy. Yeah, a little busy. Just a little bit. A little busy. And you know, Chris, you told me after the show season, when it's the busiest <laughs> time of year, summertime, everyone's fishing, our here schedule's going to relax a little bit. And here we are. We're traveling more. <laughs> There's a lot more stuff going on. It's funny how that works. How does that work? You know, it's being, what have I said? Seven years. I've been, I've been here seven years now to where no matter what you do in terms of putting together a schedule a year in advance like we do, and you think, oh, okay, I'm going to squeeze in all these fundraisers in this section and then have these couple months to really kind of focus on next year and all that, it never works out like that. Yeah. I Never. mean, when we, when we, cause you guys, what you guys don't see is that we had our, our calendar pretty much set. I want to say 70, 80% set at least by maybe January. Oh, probably December. Yeah. So I, I that was only a month of me being on at that point. And we yeah. were already scheduled out and in our minds, we thought, oh, this is perfect. Everything is going to work out. We have all these events. Sure, let's do five weeks straight of events in May <laughs> and first week of June. That works. Yeah, because that sounded like a great idea. Yeah, it sounded <laughs> su it, it was such a great idea at the time. And then now we're halfway through the year and there's still events that we're trying to plan or want to plan. And we're looking at our calendar and we don't have a lot. <laughs> we really don't have a lot of play. <laughs> yeah, it, it gets... It gets sad when you're at the point where you're looking for free weekends or free Saturdays and whether it's another event that we want to plan or even your pers personal life. It's like, eh, not that weekend, not that weekend, not that weekend. Maybe this weekend if I can move this and this and this. Not that weekend, not that weekend. Ah, oh, crap. That's so-and-so's birthday. I got to reschedule that. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, and then... Oh, there's white sea bass heads that need to get picked up. So oh, yeah. let's put that in the schedule. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's spend a day going to Santa Barbara and back. Yeah. yeah which we're happy to do. However. It takes a time. It, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. That's another day. Gone. <laughs> yeah. Gone. Yeah. So if we don't reply to you or we don't message you, no, it's not because we don't like you. We are just very busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then add on, you know, a personal life. Your case a wedding to plan, my case a brand new kid, who just turned one by the way. Happy birthday, Reed! Happy birthday, little Reed! <laughs> yeah, that was that. Was, I can't believe it's been it's been a year, been a whole three hundred and sixty six days because the leap year. Oh, that's right. You count the leap year. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, we can go on and on and on about complaining about our schedules. But one thing that we wanted to get on here and talk about was when we when we say we travel a lot we travel a lot but this month has been actually kind of fun and most recently because of a little thing that i'm sure all of us have heard but very few of us have been to now now us mm -hmm. i cast yeah and i never thought in a million years that little old me would be walking through the iCast floors with a name tag or with a badge that had my name. It wasn't just vendor or media or anything. <laughs> I did not think I would be walking through there. And not just that, knowing people there and having people call you yourself out. Come up to you. Come up to me. Yeah. People that we know from out here. It, it was such a, a neat experience from that side of things because, I you know, this whole side of the industry for me is so new, relatively new mm -hmm. from being brought up on the boat side or I guess from a fisherman side and then the boat side. And then now I'm in thrusted into this side of the industry. It's just been such a 
wild ride. My yeah. eyes haven't opened, Chris. <laughs> They've stayed open like that. Yeah, like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, just to give a little bit of background to our guest, to our uh, listeners here, ICAST is an annual, uh, it's a true t trade show where pretty much a lot of, if not most, companies from not only the U.S., but around the world attend in Orlando, Florida for three days. It's a three-day convention. And it, it's almost like we take over the entire city because we always, you know, you kind of alluded to, to it earlier where we have a lot of familiar faces that all travel 2,500 miles mm -hmm. to Florida. And it's not like we're, you know, we don't know people, but we also realize, at least I, I realized this year, that we also don't know a lot of people in the fishing industry because it's so massive everyone comes together for three days and it's it was quite the experience for me for sure yeah i mean even from a fishing standpoint i mean we're so used to our niche little fishery over here that we feel like is constantly changing and adapting and then we go over to the east coast in florida and we're seeing their side of the tackle industry and just how wildly different it is I don't know. It, I mean, fishing for red drum on like super light line or fishing for them on like 20 pound braid, 30 pound braid, straight fluoro. Like it, it's mm -hmm. it, in like a foot of water was just weird. Like it well, felt okay. like unnatural almost. You brought it up, but let, let's talk about that. You, my friend, got to catch your first redfish ever. Oh, I did. How'd you I, like it? How'd you enjoy that kind of, I guess, that style of fishing? Um, it was very different. I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed the fact that it was warm. Did not enjoy the sunburn that <laughs> took a week and a half to, to heal. Um, but to be able to f sight, I mean, we were hauling like 40 knots and like a foot I was of water. Say, that deep of water. Yeah. It, like my less than an arm length <laughs> of water. And to fishing the mangroves and, and sight fishing for them, that was so neat. That was such a neat experience to be able to, to fly line a little, pin, what do they call it, pintail? Yeah, pintail. A little pintail mm -hmm. out there and just wait. Mm -hmm. um, granted, when we went, fishing was really tough that day. But the school that we did find, if you couldn't, it, if you were able to get it away from the lemon sharks. Oh, my God. That were worse than seals if i had it dare yeah. i say sharks were bad that day yeah and yeah it it was very cool what very i find different. most interesting is you know i try not to be that that guy that you know says oh i've i've done this before or oh i've i've done this and done that and you know i know what you guys are going through cuz i used to be a guy myself i don't i don't do that i try not to do that but when it comes to actually talking, and, and you kind of probably realize this with our guide, who once he kind of felt us out and who we were and how experienced we were and all that, more so you than me, but <laughs> you know, he kind of let his guard down, really kind of let us know what he had to say. Yeah. And, and you know, nothing bad. It was just the way it was. It just kind of seeing his fishery or their fishery out there. We were fishing the Crystal River in Florida. And just to kind of see what, what he kind of had to say or listen to what he had to say. And it was a completely different perspective. Yeah, not, not just that. I mean, it, it, even some of the issues that they face within the state and some of the battles that they're, they're trying to face, a lot of it is not too different than what we are going through here. It's just with different species. Yeah. It's different water. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of differences, but there's a lot of similarities in these battles, Yeah, especially in the advocacy front where, and it's a completely different mentality from state to state because certain states love their equivalent to CDFW. Other states absolutely hate them and they think they're the enemy. Yeah, And then there's all, a lot of other states that are kind of in between where they don't, you know, they're friends, but you have to keep them at arm's length. And it's, you know, don't not putting any state's departments uh, on blast or anything, but it's just interesting to see like the different kind of relationships and what other issues that they are fully fledged and what they care about. 
Yeah, and and that just made me think of the conversation we had with someone during ICAST. You know, there were a bunch of signs. Obviously, we're in Florida, so there's a lot of local legislature um, being pushed around and within that community specifically that yes on two. Oh yeah. Yes on two and 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 to give you a a reference point, we were all we were doing was having lunch at the table in the convention center, <laughs> just wolfing down food, and then all of a sudden, Tony. With her, op- with her mouth. I opened up my, my big old mouth <laughs> to ask a question. Yeah. Little did we know, the guy who was running the entire effort was sitting right next to us, and that <laughs> kind of led us down a whole rabbit hole. Uh, but it was interesting to see kind of like what they're facing out there. And, you know, I, if I recall correctly, the Yes on Two movement was really just to make, and I could be completely wrong, but it was really just to make fishing a right in the state of Florida rather than a privilege. Yeah, they were trying to institutionalize the ability to fish. Mm -hmm. And they were even thinking further ahead in life to where Florida, it's pretty, it's leaning one way politically, especially right now and all that. But they're planning ahead for the future to where if it were to switch, that they're still, they've, they've made it known and they've made it in law to where we're never gonna lose this Mm -hmm. because by doing our actions there. It's like playing offense Mm -hmm. rather than us here playing a whole lot of defense. Yeah. So it was it was really interesting, that whole that whole thing and hopefully everything goes well for them out there. Yeah, I hope so too. I mean we were seated at the table with a bunch of hunters too and they were like, This is no brainer. Yeah. They they can't take that away from us. And I'm sure a lot of that state feels the same way and then California and it's different environment, you know, mm, with yeah. <laughs> a little bit more difficult over here. We're always special. But that's why we exist. That's yeah. why we're here to fight those battles. Exactly. Well, for uh, for those of us who went to ICAST for the first time ever, which is yourself and myself, I'll, I'll start with you. What was your perspective just in general from walking the floor, from meeting all kinds of people, If you had to pin down like a common phrase or or basically a recap of ICAST, how did you like it? How did you dislike it? Word or phrase? Well, okay. Maybe not a word, just (laughs) your your own summary. I, you know, I I didn't, we, okay, let me back up. (laughs) Going into ICAST, we were told by many people throughout the course of, you know, from the shows, knowing that we were going to be there up until, you know, a week before, we were told, you know, oh, you know, make sure to talk to this person or set up meetings here and oh, you guys are going to love it or it's going to be exhausting. And, you know, it's one thing to hear other people's perspective and you thinking that same perspective and applying it, but it's another thing to actually experience it while you're there and you think to yourself, whoa, I did not expect this. I Maybe I should have done this. It, a lot of those things didn't come until basically until we left that had me thinking about what we could do next year that's different than this year having Mm -hmm. gone through and we didn't even go through most of the floor now that i think about it i mean this this convention center was so big there's no way you can walk the whole floor in a day in a single show yeah (laughs) yeah and even with i i kind of have the same the same opinion right to where i had never been before i had heard so much about it you know, depending on the people who I talked to, they either loved it, hate it, or they were indifferent. But ultimately, everyone consistently said, it's good that you're going mm-hmm. just to experience it. And I thought it was definitely worth the trip, for sure. Uh, we met quite a bit of people that are already on our side and that, you know, really we work with on a, on a, on a daily basis. But also, we met a lot of people who are behind the brands that we use every day. And we just don't, we, we don't have that relationship yet. And so I think that was a huge, uh, huge win for us, for CCA California in general, to where, you know, we got, we got ins now, we got relationships, we have starting points. Now it's all about developing those relationships. And, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a year. It's going to take a couple of years and all that. But consistently going back um, and really, you know, really kind of developing those relationships I think it's going to be a good thing. We saw old friends, one of which was our uh, friend, uh, Mr. Nakata, uh, for the first time in a long time. Um, he seems like he's uh, up to no good in Florida as well. 
But uh, he says hello, by the way, to each and every one of you, all the listeners. <laughs> um, we also saw or met some of his friends who were, uh, like Darren and I had done in the old days, give them a lot of crap. So there's no change in that. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it, it, that it, ICAST to me is where a lot of the networking starts. Yeah. That's fair to say. It's a starting point. Starting point. And I think for us, for CCA going into the 10th year, I think that's that's huge for us to be able to grow up and and be seen as, okay, we're here. This is this is what we're battling. We need your mm -hmm. help. Are you on board? Cool. Let's yeah. let's work together. Yeah. Because that's what we're about. That's really the pitch. Yeah. It's like we don't care how we work together, we want to work together. Right. Everyone can help. Um and then we also got to see and meet a whole bunch of new faces from our uh, good friends at CCA Florida. Those guys were pretty cool. They know how to throw a party, which is great. I mean, for context, everybody listening, <laughs> there are three employees to cover the whole state of California. You've got Wayne, you have Chris, and unfortunately, you have myself. Oh, please. <laughs> we, there are, tw well, we probably met 20. At least. 20 and they're not called assistant directors, they're called regional directors because there are so many chapters and so many individuals to make up those chapters that there are 20, imagine 20 of Chris's and 20 of me's. That's yeah. that, that alone blew my mind. Yeah, it's crazy. It would be, <laughs> I think, well, not I think, I know we will get there at some point they also have 30 years ahead of us, so I'm not terribly worried, but we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. It'll yeah. be a party. I'm sure both of us will still be there, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting from my perspective because before CCA, before even the fishing industry in my life, I was I was in marketing. And so there were a couple times where I had to go to, to shows that are very similar Um both in stature, both in size and all that, and also the same purpose, which is to network. And I hadn't done that in a long time, whereas, you know, we always talk about the the, the hall shows and PCS and um, Bakersfield and Alventura and all those other shows. But, you know, those are what they call consumer shows, where you have the consumer coming in, it's a cheap entry fee, and basically everyone's here to um, to buy or get in on a deal or just to see what's out new and all that. ICAST is different. It's a trade show, meaning you have to be affiliated with the industry in some way, shape, or form, whether it's through the media, whether it's a buyer, whether you own a tackle store, um, you work for a tackle company, whatever. You have to be affiliated with the industry. And so that's the main difference to where it's a different uh, group of people walking through those doors and their purpose is completely different, whereas they're trying to make deals and they're trying to network and they're trying to, you know, lay out their, their ultimately what's, you know, what, 2025, four months from now. Yeah. And I think that's probably a big reason why they have it in August, because it's right before forecasting goes. So, you know, different purpose of a show, completely different show in, it, in itself. But I think that was the biggest takeaway for me to where. You know, I hadn't done that trade show round in a long time, and it kind of came back to me. And you know, I think we made the most of it uh, out of the out of our first year. And and really, we kind of on purpose kind of came in with, you know, not too heavy of schedules, mm -hmm. but enough to keep us busy. And we were more than that, more than busy for sure. Um, but we had never been there before. Yeah. Had to kind of go in with our eyes wide open. And now, in twenty twenty five, when we were back there, we'll probably do what what Ali did and Jesse did which is basically run from meeting to meeting to meeting like all day every day yeah you ready <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um, but yeah I mean I cast is if you do have an opportunity to go I would definitely take it up um, to do it Florida being in Florida in general is also super super fun for me I just love it over there it's I can I can stand the humidity I can take the heat and all that I don't know about you but that's that's just me yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I don't I'm not big on humidity. I mean, you saw me walking around when we went to Houston. You saw me in Florida, and humidity, to, humidity, and heat, those two combined, do not sit well with my system. So walk walking outside of the convention center, I felt like there were a million blow dryers just 
<laughs> pointed a right one. at me and I did not like that at all. But but for those of you that have played Red Dead Redemption on the Xbox or PlayStation, it gave me Red <laughs> Dead vibes. And uh, I think I liked it a, l- a little bit after after fishing that first day or second day whenever it was mm-hmm. that we got there. I uh, I definitely liked Florida a little bit more. Yeah. I'd only been there once before. Yeah. But it was in the winter time. I'd never been during the summer. Yeah, it was I think fishing on the water in the summer that takes a lot out of you out there for sure which is a big reason why they only fish like four hours a day oh i I, get it (laughs) i've never sweat so much in my life maybe in in puerto vallarta but it's the same kind of heat to to stay that hydrated my gosh oh yeah yeah it's it's unbelievable it's unbelievable well i know we um we had a good time fishing yeah that was fun it was we had a little uh, friendly wager between Tony and myself. Unfortunately, I was not victorious. <laughs> but it's but a, it was tough. It was tough. What was our bet again? We had a bet, right? Do we do a... I don't even know if we did the terms. Mm. It was a warm-up. That's what was, it, was it a steak bet? Did, did we, we do get, a steak bet? Or did you just offer it and I never... I may have offered it. Maybe. I don't remember. Mm. I think it was so tough that we forgot about it. <laughs> I I had, I do, I will say, I had an opportunity to tie, and then a freaking shark just had to freaking just ruin the day. It was within grasp, too, of yeah. the tie. Yeah, it was very close. Yeah. It was very close, but you didn't snap a rod. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Oh, it was fun, though. It was fun. Yeah. I think next year, well, we talked about that. I think we'll either go back to the same place and do some tarpon fishing, which was super fun. Maybe we'll go down the Keys and do that spiel. Because, I mean, everyone talks about fishing in the Keys. It's just unbelievable. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I, th- I think experiencing a really good, like, redfish bite would be a lot of fun. I felt like those things pulled like a, like a kelp paddy yellowtail would. Mm-hmm in like six inches of water. It's so interesting how they fish. It's very interesting because you mentioned the light tackle, the lighter tackle. It's all sight fishing to where it's like, we were, at one point we were literally fishing with another boat and the school was right in the middle of us. We were probably like all of what, like 70 feet away from each other, the boat, the two boats or whatever. And they were literally like pointing saying, okay, cast over there, or they're over there now, or whatnot. And the other boat started to flank them on the other side to chase them over towards us. It was interesting. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's always cool to experience different different sides of fishing, right? Like, if you if you go through your, your whole life just fishing for one species, you may be really proficient at it, or not, but I would imagine you'd be really proficient at it, but... I feel like to to kind of load your fishing knowledge and arsenal. Feel like a, a, any good fisherman would experience other fisheries, and it would be a good way to maybe take some pointers and maybe take some tactics from another fishery that maybe aren't really done over right. here. Yeah, you know, or maybe I don't know different tackle. Like I, he was showing me different knots that he was using. I'm like, why don't we use these over <laughs> here? This is brilliant. And you were teaching him some knots too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's all, I feel like fishing in general and like boat life in general, it's all about passing down information. That's why you don't have a lot of books on not necessarily how to drive a boat, but the knowledge to be able to, to educate someone, you can't learn that from a book. You can't really put down words on how to spot a breezer or mm-hmm. a foamer. Those are things that you just... The experience terms. yeah or, or the, terms. the terms the terms <laughs> yes it, you know fishing i i think that's one of the beautiful things about fishing is a lot of it majority of it is all word of mouth and it's stories and that's that's what we talk about all the time yeah i mean he was shocked to learn that we use terms like foamers and breezers yeah and, you know and what were do you remember some of his terms <sighs> i can't remember for the life of me but there he was using some terms some terminology that they use and all that it was fascinating 
It's fascinating. And then yeah. didn't you catch a different species too? No. Something other than a redfish? No. I don't know. No? I did. Hmm. I'll have to think. Mm. Oh, maybe it was a different... Yeah, I can't remember. No. No? I would have remembered. Well, the good news is you got on the board with redfish, so okay. that's... That was the that was the goal. We achieved the goal. Good good job. I got a thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, I think uh, like like what we've mentioned before, iCast definitely worth it. Super super fun. Got to see a lot of our good friends and many many of those that you guys know as well around uh, our uh, neck of the woods and on the west coast in Southern California. Um, aside from that, I mean. We have a lot. It's almost like, you know, when people say, oh, yeah, we really don't have much going on. It's like us. We're in the same boat, but the complete opposite. It's like, where do you start? Where do you start? And the fall is going to be very busy for us. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm looking at the calendar right now, and I think it starts in September when our chapter events start picking up. Um, yeah. Yeah, we have September. Our Santa Barbara golf tournament that I think kicks us off. Yeah. Then IE, the top golf event. Well, before before the um the Santa Barbara golf tournament, the end of Star is September second. Yeah. So we can't forget that. End of Star is September second. So we're just we're a little bit over the halfway point. Um it's not too late to sign up. You can sign up all the way up until September. September 1st, September 2nd, if you really wanted to. Yeah. If you really wanted to. So don't feel like you missed out. It only takes one entry to win a boat. It only takes one entry to win yeah. a boat, a trip, cool gear, gift mm -hmm. cards. Uh, what else is on there, Chris? We've we got Terrafin. There are electric motors. Yeah. We have trips to Alaska, a trip to Cedros. Yeah. Man, trip to La Paz. Stacked. Why wouldn't you? Right. It's forty dollars. Forty dollars will get you that. Yeah. It's slam dunk. And believe it or not, Tony, you know this. We're already planning for next year's star tournament too. We are. Yeah. We are. I'm not gonna let any cats out of the bag quite yet, but it's already in the works. It's already happening. All I could say is it's going to be fun, it's gonna be exciting, and we can't wait. Yeah. You and I know Chris, you've put so much of your time and energy and life. <laughs> into this in into this planning so um it, it's all gonna be good yeah all, all good stuff all good stuff but yeah if you are fishing this summer do the star tournament if you're fishing in u.s waters do the star tournament do yourself a favor yeah you're you're taking pictures of fish might as well try and get a trip out of it or something but aside from that if you are looking to join a chapter you want to see what what these chapters are about let us know we have nine chapters from morro bay all the way down here to san diego we're always looking for for volunteers for new faces old faces all the faces come on by if you have a face come on by. if you have a face <laughs> <laughs> Come on by, hang out with us. All these chapters, they meet once a month, either via Zoom, which is super easy if you have time, six, seven o'clock at night and you have a free hour, come join us. We have tons of events that we're constantly planning for. We talk a little bit about advocacy, whatever's going on. And uh, yeah, let us know. We'll get you in touch with the right people. Yep, for sure. Well, Tony, any uh, final thoughts before we wrap it up here? I think that's all I got, Chris. Short, yeah. short and sweet. I do have a uh, a request amongst all of our listeners here. Remember, about a month ago, we did our Instagram live deal and, we did. and all that. Yeah. On this, on the comments below, on both on YouTube and also on our podcast as well, or just shoot us an email too. Um, our emails are on the ccacalifornia.org website. Let us know. Did you enjoy that? And would you like us to do more? I have a feeling as to what direction we're going to go, but let us know. Yeah. I mean, we're, all, we're always looking for constructive criticism, whether we want it or not. And if you have a particular person in which you'd like to hear from as well. Yeah, absolutely. If there is a special guest, personality, you name it, that you want us to chat with, let us know. Yeah. 
I mean, we've got a couple a couple good ones in the pipeline for the rest of 24. We've got things on the books for 25, some new things bringing to the podcast, new aspects of our of our podcast, all coming in in the tail end of 24 and into 25 as well. But it's uh, we're going to finish this year off strong for sure. And we haven't even really talked about it. We have our 100th episode coming up. Are we there already? Yeah. When it's, did that happen? In two years, <laughs> three years. It's been so long, I can't even remember. But yeah, one episode 100 is coming up, and uh, I think we're going to do something very, very special on that one. So stay tuned for that one. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. <laughs> that'll be a fun one. That's a live one for sure, I think. Yep, yep, for sure. Well, guys, that's going to do it this week, short and sweet, and uh, with uh, your favorite two co-hosts. Sorry, Darren. Um, <laughs> anyways, if you guys, uh, again, shoot us a note. Let us know what you think and uh, what you want to hear about. And um, with that, make sure to go follow us on Instagram at CCACalifornia. Uh, that's our website, .org. Follow us on Instagram at CCACalifornia. Make sure to go follow the star Instagram, CCACalStar. And, uh, yeah, all good stuff. That's the best way to get a hold of us and to stay current on everything that's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tony, I guess we'll wrap it up. Yeah, that's it. That's all we got. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you guys next week. See ya. Take